Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of AliExpress's finest. This is the Snowman M T4. So, is the Snowman going to melt, or is the Snowman going to get some balls? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at Snowman's M T4. Now, Snowman is a, somewhat of a strange company. There's tons and tons of fans and coolers available in all different shapes and sizes with RGB fans, dual fans, single fans, four pipes, six pipes, etc., etc. So this is gonna be predominantly about the dual fan version, which I've got here with the four heat pipes, but I will be putting links in the video description to AliExpress site where I've got this from and also the different versions available. So if there's something which tickles your fancy a little bit more, and uh, maybe you want a bit of RGB bling, or maybe you just want a single fan, or whatever the case may be, then obviously you can make your decisions there. Now, the thing that may make up your mind is the fact that this is a 120mm tower cooler with four heat pipes, comes with two fans, and cost me here in the United Kingdom, including postage and packing, just slightly over £14. Yes, that's one four. This is ridiculously cheap. It really, really is. But is it going to stand up to the tests actually on a CPU? Now, in this video, we'll be doing some tests with a Ryzen 5 3600, which I think is actually a really good comparison to go with this particular cooler. Obviously, you could use it with a 3900, 3950, etc. But I think most people, if you're spending that kind of money on a processor, you're probably going to go up the market a little bit. But for those of us with a little bit more of a, uh, a tighter budget, maybe on the Ryzen 3100 or the 3300 or 3500X or even the 3600, this is going to be a really good comparison to see what it's actually like. Now, in this video, I will be comparing it with something which is completely ridiculous, which is a Fractal S36 water cooler, which is a 360mm rad, which is actually in the PC behind me, which you can uh, possibly see right there. Now, to begin with, the temperatures in that system behind me, 30 degrees idle, which uh, pretty much what I expect it to be, and under full load, Cinebench, 10 minutes, around like 63, 64 degrees. So how close do you think we're gonna get with a cheapo AliExpress cooler against a 360 mil rad? Well, there's only one way to find out and that's keep watching the video. So the first thing we should do is do the unboxing. Let's get out of the way before we put this on the system and do some testing. So as you can see from the packaging, it's actually quite weird packaging. On one side it's got that, and on the other side it's got that, and Neither one of them are actually anything like what is actually in the box. Yeah, good old AliExpress. So there is a RGB version, like I said, on the side there. It shows you a little bit about the heat pipe situation. So you've got four heat pipes. If you go for the MT6 version, that's the six heat pipe version. The MT4 is the four heat pipe version. This is compatible with loads and loads of different processors. Uh, there is a full list in here, which I'll put a close up on the screen for you right now. But essentially, pretty much any CPU socket made within the last 10 to 15 years, you'll be absolutely fine with. So that's pretty much all the AMD ones, AM3, AM4. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be AM1, which is a really, really old socket. But realistically, I don't think there's hardly any of those on the market at all. But certainly AM2 as well, no issues there whatsoever. And it goes all the way back to LGA775 for Intel, right up to the latest 1200s. It doesn't actually say 1200s actually on the box. Uh, but it, it's exactly the same fitting as the 1151, so yeah, no issues there either. Moving around onto the other side, it goes into some of the specifications. So we have got the product dimensions, which uh, I'll put up on the screen right now for you. Also, it is a 120 by 120 by 25 mil fan times two. The RPM of the fan is actually quite an interesting one. It maxes out at 1300 RPM plus or minus 10%. So it's not a particularly fast spinning fan. Most of the other 120 mil coolers on the market start off around about the 400 RPM range and top out maybe 1800 to perhaps even 2200. So the one thing this is gonna be going for is quietness. It is gonna be exceptionally quiet. And moving on to that, at the bottom here, it does tell you that it's rated at 18 dBA, which uh, realistically I can't even measure because the ambient noise in this room is more than 18 dBA. So, uh, well, we'll see what that's like and see if it's actually audible under full load, which, Hopefully, in theory, it shouldn't be. And also, it moves 48 CFM of air, which, yeah, isn't brilliant. But again, it is a lower RPM fan, so I guess that's to be expected. The more important thing is, does it actually cool? Now, before we go into the actual taking it out of the box, which uh, we should have got to by now, to be honest with you, but 
One of the things about buying stuff from AliExpress and obviously airmail and shipping, etc., is there is an extreme likelihood of damage. Now, fortunately, this one didn't suffer too badly. Uh, there's a little bit of a ding in the box down in this corner, slightly more so in this corner here. So it's actually arrived relatively unscathed. Although when we do take a look a little bit closer, I've had this out of the box already, you will notice there is a few little dings in the fin stack, but I've actually managed to bend some of them back already just for using a flat blade. So no real issues there, but obviously if you're expecting perfection out of the box, when you're paying 14 pounds, including shipping from China, it's, uh, yeah, it's unlikely. So inside the box, we get some of our mounting hardware. So these are the fitting pins for the Intel sockets. We get the cooler itself wrapped in some uh, very thin polystyrene kind of wrap. And at the bottom of the box, we've got the Intel mounting ring. So again, that is for pretty much all the Intel sockets from 775 upwards. With this, all you do is there's some plastic inserts. You just push them through the holes. Then there's some black pins, and then you push them down to fasten it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want to see how this works with an Intel system, do let us know in the comments section. I do have another Intel system. Unfortunately, it's only a 10100F. So it's not really going to be uh, pushing the extremes of what it can do. But certainly if you want to see that, do let us know in the comments and we'll make a separate video on the Intel installation. I do love the fact how the box wobbles where it's so badly damaged. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So looking at the cooler itself, as you can see, it's a, a pretty nice unit and it weighs around about 600 grams with the fans attached. So you've got realistically probably about 500 grams worth of cooling weight there, which in effect is the same as something like the Wraith Prism very close and also things like the Cooler Master Evo 212 which for comparison costs about 30 to 40 pounds here in the UK at the moment so if you're considering maybe one of those or perhaps something like the Gamax 400 or Freezer 34 those kinds of coolers then this is actually definitely worth looking into. So to begin with the fans themselves now this is a non-RGB version so it just got these nice black and white fans the fans themselves are held on with these spring clips which actually I can confirm already very easy to use, uh, no issues there. The spring tension isn't overly tight, so it's relatively easy to take them off, all that kind of stuff. And the blades themselves actually appear to be very well made. There is actually kind of indentations in the blade to guide airflow and hopefully to reduce noise. But again, at 18 dBA, then yeah, is it really worth it or has it done a very good job? We'll see very shortly. In the corners of each one of these mounting holes is like a, a foam protection and also on the back as well so where it actually mounts up against the fins of the cooling stack everything is nicely cushioned and there's a little bit of wiggle there to uh, absorb any vibrations as you can see from the top it is a pretty much kind of uh, symmetrical design so four heat pipes in a U situation going round and also you can see there's an indentation there so you can actually mount the fans either way for me personally I think it's going to work better with the retention clasp for the AM4 on this top section. So you can kind of hang that on the motherboard if it's upright. And then in this bottom section, you've got the thumb press, which uses a tension mount, and that's gonna be easier to get to at the bottom of the motherboard than what it would be at the top. Although potentially you may have to remove your graphics card to install the cooler. But that is generally the case with most of these types of coolers anyway. If you are using this with a Intel system, you do have to leave this bracket in place, the actual spring clip and this essentially clamps down to that plastic ring we showed you a little bit earlier in the video. There is a protective film on the bottom of the heat sink, or the, the cold plate, which you just remove to reveal the actual heat pipes. And as you can see, they're actually cut right in there, so they are actually kind of exposed. And actually, it's been machined pretty well. The, uh, uh, there is a close-up, actually, which I took a little bit earlier in some of the B-roll, where you can actually see the actual kind of uh, indentations in the copper itself. So it's not perfectly flat, but actually, as you feel it, it does feel relatively smooth. As towards how flat it is overall, to be honest with you, I don't have the equipment here to measure it. But certainly, again, for £14, you can't really expect too much. One slight point of interest uh, for those of you that are worried about not having enough fan headers on your motherboard. Actually, both of these fans are actually pre-wired and terminate into just one four-pin PWM connection. Which actually is quite interesting because... A, it solves other issues like wastage, so sometimes you'll get a splitter included in one of these kits, which most of us just throw to the side or put back in the box. So actually it's quite nice that they just use that to save a little bit of money and save wastage. Although, obviously, if one of the fans fails, then potentially both of them have failed because they won't both work. Some people may consider, obviously, if one of the fans fails, simply just uh, chop the wire and remove the fan which isn't working. Again, it's a standard 120mm type fan, 25mm width, so 
Yeah, you can pretty much replace them with anything you want. You could, if you want to, even replace these with uh, a couple of Noctuas, which will obviously up the price a little bit, but certainly should give you a little bit more cooling performance. Taking the fans off is really simple. You've just got this clip on the side, which you just push down a little bit and lever outwards, and then you can lift the fan off. The clips do kind of come away quite easily, but because they're relatively low tension, it isn't too much of a problem. Now, as you can see, there is some cutouts on the sides here which uh, essentially don't really do anything other than make it a little bit easier to access these clips. I think that's pretty much the main reason they're there for. It's nothing to do with RAM clearance because the fan itself actually hangs down lower than that anyway. So yeah, you could, if you want to, if you've got enough room in your case, if you do have some sort of RAM clearance issues, not that you would have, because if you think about it, it's gonna be mounted kind of like that. So moving this up higher isn't really gonna do a great deal, but certainly if you want to, you can. You could remove these move this up a little bit higher. You will lose some of the cooling efficiency, but because the, the bracket will allow it, you could if you wanted to mount it in that kind of position. So giving you a huge amount of RAM clearance. It does look kind of ugly and you may need a slightly wider case to be able to actually physically fit that, but certainly it is an option. With both the fans off, you can see it's a pretty decent fin stack and there's actually some quite decent space in between there. So you don't actually need a particularly highly static optimized fan to push air through. You do lose out on some of the efficiency because of being less dense, because of there being less fins than what it would be if it was a, a very tighter or more compressed fin stack. I think actually, again, for 14 pounds, you can't go too far wrong. The bottom section as well, the cold plate, has also some kind of heat sink sections milled into it just to aid with a little bit more uh, heat removal. But yeah, overall, I think that is uh, pretty much all I can show you. The best thing to do is actually to see what it's actually like. So we're gonna put this onto a motherboard and do some testing, and then we'll be back right after that. Okay, so we've got our processor on the motherboard. So what we're gonna do is put on some thermal compound. It doesn't actually come with thermal compound. I should have mentioned that actually in the unboxing. So uh, you may need to purchase some extra compound. So put a little blob on there. And next with the cooler, we're gonna orientate it. So we've got this clasp on that side to the top end of the board and the finger press towards the bottom side towards the GPU and first of all remove the protection which I often forget in these videos and then what we'll do is we'll just hook over the clip on the end like so and then just gently try to rotate the cooler and then a little bit of thumb pressure and that'll clasp into place and that is it you can give it a little wiggle to make sure it's firmly attached and uh, if you want to just give that another firm little press it is actually got quite a, re a harsh retention on there so it is uh it is on there pretty good so what we'll do now is to attach the fans and so we'll take one on the front first of all and just get it roughly lined up so right there looks to be a Right central, and then with the clips, one through the top hole, and one through the bottom hole, and then just pull it around the side, so that one's in. Still hold on to it a little bit, just in case it wants to pop out. So again, top hole, then the bottom hole, and then just pull this bit back, and that's it, latched into place. And for the rear, it's basically the uh, the exact the same. So you have the fan going the same way so you should see this bit on the back so with this one we do kind of like the opposite with the uh, the spring clamps so rather than going to the front it goes into the back so top hole and bottom hole and then just a little bit of pressure on the side and then again same with this one just pull it over a little bit just to even up some of the tension through the top hole through the bottom hole and clipped into place now you should find that both of the clips should be roughly about the same level. Um, it's not entirely imperative that it works that way. Do make sure as well, just give the blades a little spin just to make sure that they're not actually obscuring anything. And then you can take your PWM connector and then just plug it into your fan header. It's already up to you what you do with the, uh, the cables. You can either cable tie them up, bunch them up. Um, most of the motherboards will have a hole around here somewhere, so you can probably just tuck all that out the way. Uh, do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to get this uh, completely set up now, and then we'll get it fired up and do some temperature tests. 
Okay, so hopefully you've seen some uh, little bits of B-roll there for, from the testing. <laughs> what can I say? For £14, this thing is absolutely phenomenal, and there is no reason on God's green earth that I would say don't buy it. It is a phenomenal cooler, and I've never seen anything like it for the money. I truly haven't. I think the closest we've come in recent years is possibly the uh, Gamax 400 many, many moons ago, probably about three, four years ago, which was around about the sort of maybe 15 to 20 pounds mark. The game, that was a long time ago, pre-COVID. At the moment, most pricing in the UK markets, especially, is pretty insane. Most of the 120 mil coolers of this sort of ilk, single fan ones generally, you're looking between 25 to 45 pounds. The prices really have rocketed up. For this one, with two fans, which actually we should address the two fan situation. The difference between having one single fan and two fans is virtually within margin of error. I did test it for a significant period just with the front fan on its own and there was about one degree difference. So as we found before with previous coolers such as the Freezer 34 eSports editions, the additional fan on the back maybe a degree, maybe a couple of degrees if you're very lucky, depending on the processor. Now we've been using the Ryzen 5 3600, which is running an overclock of basically four gigahertz on all cores, which isn't particularly out there, but certainly is giving this a little bit of a run for its money. So temperature wise, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. At idle conditions in this room, which is about 22, 23 degrees, we registered somewhere hopping between 29 and 30 degrees which ironically is virtually, well, exactly the same as we're getting from the PC behind me, which has got a 360 mil water-cooled AIO. Now, I was really shocked, and that is the reason why I've actually taken the system, the test bed apart, and actually put the processor back into that machine with a fresh application of paste. Now, we're not using the best paste. This is the uh, Thermal Grease HY710. So it's not a particularly good grease. I'm not even sure what the thermal capacity is. If I can find it, I will... Oh, actually there it is. 3.17 watts per meter, or however they work out. So it's a pretty much a low end paste. So compared to both, yeah, essentially in idle conditions, pretty much exactly the same. So again, 22, 23 degree room, both of them idling between sort of 29, 30 degrees, between a 14 pounds cooler and what is potentially best part of a hundred pounds cooler. That is pretty much insane value for money. And if I was to make a chart, the chart would be like that, value for money wise, for sure. Now, the next thing to take into consideration is actually the noise. Now, testing both of these under full load, this again, around about 68, 69 degrees with the fan removed in a single fan, looking at 70, maybe 71, not a great deal of difference. With that machine behind me, around about 62, 63 degrees. It's not a huge difference. Six or seven degrees difference between a 360 mil AIO against a, a effectively a cheap Chinese knockoff brand is insane. It really is insane. So you think comparatively, if you're thinking about getting, a, say an, a reasonable all-in-one cooler, maybe a 240 mil one, which is obviously gonna compare roughly the same as that, they all are within kind of spitting distance of each other. You'd be paying anywhere between 50 to 100 pounds for a 240mm AIO in the UK at the moment. That money you saved could be the potential between your next upgrading processor, which is gonna give you a significant boost in speed and performance and possible productivity if you went with this and saved the money. So for me personally, you know what it's like here at Mike's Unboxing. We do like to save a few pennies where we can and spend money sensibly. So for me, yeah, the Snowman MT4 dual fan, it's a no-brainer. You'd be insane not to get one. The downside is the fact that this generally comes from AliExpress, which is an absolutely fine place to go and they've got some really good protections. So if things don't turn up, then you can request refunds or replacement parts all that kind of stuff the trouble is is the shipping time we live in a world where amazon and ebay and retail shops are king so having to wait two three maybe four weeks for an item to arrive from china is a little bit of a a bitter pill to swallow so my advice would be if you like the look of this and you like the price of this but you don't like the waiting for it 
then certainly do have a look on Amazon and also other UK sites. Now you won't find it for the same price, that I can guarantee you because I've looked, but you may find spending maybe an extra five, maybe an extra 10 pounds. And even still, it 20 to 25 pounds, this thing still kicks some ass. It really, really does. And I'd be amazed to see what it works like with some not sure fans on there, although I don't think it's gonna make a massive amount of difference. Again, these 120mm tower coolers, they all perform relatively similarly, depending on the fans, the fan speeds, etc. And we should touch on that actually, fan speeds. Even at the highest rating on there, this thing is pretty quiet. It's not silent, and the 18 decibels thing, I don't know who made that up, I think they're missing a letter or a digit off there. It's probably in a region of about 38 decibels under full load. You can definitely hear it above other ambient noise for sure. But still, it is very, very quiet. And actually, weirdly, it's actually quieter than the Fractal S36, which again is insane. So for less money, for less bulk, and for less noise, effectively, this is the better cooler. At least that's my opinion. So that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. Um, I hopefully haven't gushed too much about the Snowman cooler, but it is a fantastic option. It really, really is. So if you're looking at maybe upgrading from the stock cooler that come with your Intel or AMD processor, definitely worth looking into, an absolute no-brainer. If you're thinking of changing it from maybe another item, such as maybe a 3 to 34, a Evo 212, Game Max 400, that kind of thing, then realistically you're not gonna see any difference. It's gonna be virtually the same. So probably not worth doing if you're looking at changing from one of those. But if you're building a nice, cheap and cheerful system and you want it to be cool and quiet and not cost you a fortune, Yes, definitely grab yourself a snowman. So that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.